Hey guys, welcome to the Summit Heights Fellowship broadcast. My name is Edward Crouch and I'm the lead pastor here at Summit Heights. And before we get to our broadcast, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us. If you have a few minutes today, check out our website, summitheightsfellowship.com and you'll learn all about our church. We have a great student ministry, an incredible children's ministry, preschool ministry, and we do small groups all over our community from Mineola to Quitman to Winsboro, Hawkins, even in Big Sandy. We would love to have you check us out one Sunday. If there's anything we could ever do for you, please take a few minutes, go to our website, fill out that prayer card on our website, and we would love to pray for you, reach out to you, or minister to you in any way we can. Again, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the broadcast. If there's any decisions or questions you have at the end of our broadcast, please reach out to us at our number on the screen or on our website. We would love to visit with you. Have a great day. Enjoy the broadcast. Well, good morning. If you were here last week, you... Uh... I thought it was pretty good. I don't know. I'm a little biased, but uh, we've been in this series uh, for about a month now. What would Jesus do? And we've been addressing some topics. And last week we talked about tattoos. We broke down that passage in Leviticus for what it really is and what it was addressing and, and what it means for us today. We looked at the zero passages in the New Testament that deal with tattoos, and we looked at what it means to honor your body, and whether a tattoo, and we talked about double cheeseburgers, if you remember that, and you know, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go back and watch last week's message, because this morning, you're in for a treat. We're following up last week's message with a testimony, and this is my friend, are you my friend? I hope so. You were supposed to correct me. I'm your brother. This is my brother, my brother in Christ and my brother in arms, Brandon Brown, and uh, you're going to get to hear from him today, and Brandon and I have become pretty tight over the last year and a half or so, and I'm telling you right now, this is a good, good man, and uh, he loves Jesus. He's got a wonderful family, and, and he's doing a great work and a great ministry here at Summit Heights, and so I want you to hear from Brandon, and you may not be able to tell from where you're sitting, but Brandon does have a few tattoos, and um, so we thought we would bring him up this morning and let you hear from him uh, as a follow-up to last week. So Brandon, tell us your story. How did you come to Christ? What was that like? When was that? Um, it was about... Now, I, I mean, at least six years ago, uh, I had hit a rock bottom place uh, again. <laughs> I've had several of those leading up to this. And uh, I just, I had visited this church uh, maybe a year before that, um, coming in for all the wrong reasons. I didn't stay very long. Uh, had had some animosity towards this church because I didn't I didn't hear from from Edward who had my contact information and I was like well they must not care too much about me they ain't trying to see what's going on and found out later it's because I changed my phone number so it's kind of hard to uh, funny how that funny how that works right hold that up a little bit so um, end up hitting hitting that bottom place uh, hit my knees at that at the same time and uh, when I come up I came back and that was when Ed you know clear, clear we cleared up why there was no communication and uh, put me into because I didn't know what to do after that I, didn't, I was like what do I do now I mean I know he's there I know he he I'm, I'm, I'm chasing him now I mean there's no other way for me to go and so he put me uh, put me in connection with Joe Fields who has uh, been a tremendous influence in my life uh, as a uh, to disciple me, to show me what it does look like to move forward from here, and then so then I've been I've been here ever since. So tell us about that journey a little bit, um, coming into Summit, connecting with Joe Fields, and then connecting with a group of men uh, that mean a lot to you in your life, and just what God's been doing in the last couple of years specifically. Well. Uh, not long after I started discipling with Joe, uh, I met uh, my future bride, 
I wish we could put the spotlight on her right now. <laughs> um, Joe, uh, Joe and, and his wife uh, premarital counseled us. I mean, just uh, walked us and then married us. He, he married us. Um, uh, we, our family started coming here and then I, uh, I guess it wasn't, it was about a year, not even a year after that. We, uh, I, uh, met a, met a man named, uh, David Elmore who, uh, saw a man waiting in the hallway mm-hmm. and, uh, he invited me to go on a, a weekend because in that, in that year of trying to live this new Christian life thing out, uh, I had so many blocks. Things weren't. I had I, things weren't working out the way I thought they should be working out. I, I had questions and I couldn't find any answers. And and uh, so I I got invited to go on this weekend, this men's retreat, and uh, and those those things were affecting my my marriage. That I'm but that was new and it shouldn't be. You know, I was like, why you shouldn't newlyweds shouldn't have these struggles? But I'm bringing forty years of garbage into a relationship. And I didn't realize that that stuff doesn't just go away. That stuff's still coming up. And and so anyway, I go on this weekend and I found out some things about myself. Um, Most importantly, I found out that uh, the person that I really am that's underneath the tattoos, that's underneath the bandana, that's underneath all this exterior stuff is, was, um, not only welcome, but loved um, for who I am. And, and being able to have that, uh, it, it changed everything for me. Mm-hmm. It, it, just, it, it just opened up a whole new way of looking at life, mm-hmm. you know. So tell us about your tattoos. <laughs> How many do you have? One. <laughs> uh, it's it's a it's yeah I'm I'm pretty covered uh, except for my thighs and pretty much everywhere else I'm 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 covered up. All right. So when did you get your first tattoo? I was 14. All right. 14. And and so is is there a story behind that? And I know a lot of times tattoos do tell stories. Most, if not all, of your tattoos were before what you just spoke about. And so spend some time telling us the story of, of what you have and how it relates to your life. And then I'm going to follow it up with something you, you spoke to me last week. But go ahead and share with us that. Oh, uh, all right. Well, my first tattoo was when I was 14. Um, it was done in a buddy of mine's garage uh, with a remote control race car motor. <laughs> and uh, so it... <laughs> And, and we were, we were smoking it up and drinking it up and, you know, um, and it was, it was, it was a gang tattoo. It was, it was part of a, the group that I was running around with and, and it was something I wasn't telling myself this at the time, but it was as if, you know, if I get, once I get this, now I'm a man, mm. you know what I mean? That, that was my, that's how I identified what does, how do I know? How do you know when, when you're a man? So. That, that, that was what was going through my mind at the time. And then, uh, it wasn't, it was two years later. I was, uh, I was incarcerated. I was locked up and I didn't see daylight for 15 years. And, um, 15 years is in prison is where every other tattoo that I got came from. Um, every tattoo I got is in prison. Um, they do tell a story, but the story they tell now is different than the one they told when I got them. Well, let's start with the one that they told when you got them, and uh, then we'll we'll fast forward and, and tie um, all that together. Well, I I had a I had an image of God my whole life. I was taught, you know, my grandma talked to me about God, and I, I went away though, and and I didn't see him stepping in and doing what I think he should be doing. There came a point where I was just generally pissed off at God. I, I didn't, I was calling him, I mean, beating my chest, telling him, you know, cause I, I, I told him I hated him. I was really, really that, I mean, and it, to the point that I went the exact opposite direction 
and started studying uh, Satanism, uh, every other religion I could think of, Buddhism, just anything that wasn't him, hmm. I was diving into. And for a long time, and, and most of the tattoos on the right side of my body are very evil oriented. And, and just at a glance, it's, it's very, they could be disturbing. And, uh, but that's where I was at the time. And of course, eventually I saw differently I came. I, I started coming back, and which is just another story in itself of just how amazing His grace is. That somebody that was just basically telling him to, to telling him to go to hell was just just loving me through it. He loved me through all of that, you know. And so I got that, and then the you know there was I was in, I was gang related, so I've got tattoo. I've got a couple of tattoos that relate to that life. Um, the left side of my body is mostly all Vikings, which is not really a, a gang orientation, but it, re, you know, represents strength and courage and, and all of those things. And, and, uh, I've even got a, I've even got an anti-Muslim tattoo on mm. me that I got because of 9-11 mm. and the war that was going on with the Muslims and the whites in there that I was involved in. And, and so I just... Every, all my tattoos represented where I was at at the time. I wanted people to see what I wanted my story to be told without me having to open my mouth. People would just look and say, okay, I know, I know what he is. But now I'm in a place where people look at me and now they're telling a story that's not true. Right, and we're going to get to that in a minute. Yeah. Because so, he said something to me last week that is, if this isn't the gospel, I don't know what is. And so we're going to get to that ju in just a minute. But uh, so we're going to park that right now. And so you've got, you said your right side is more of the, you told me last week, the evil, the, and then your left side is you, you were into Vikings because it signified, you know, dominance and adventure and, yeah. you know, things of that nature. So before we get to where you were going, let's talk a little bit. I made a statement last week. I have a family member and I only have this one mm -hmm. and one over here uh but i have a family member that judges me harshly mm. just for that <laughs> i can't imagine uh what, what what are people's reaction when they see you what do you feel like their reaction is most of the time i feel like their reaction is just to get as far you know go the other way go the other direction um to, because it just, and I, I mean, I understand. I mean, I, I, I judge other people that look just like me when I see them, you know? So I get it. Um, the cool thing about that though is, well, that's, that's more, or more about Summit is that not one person here has ever treated me like that. I mean, there was, there was a... There was a little old lady named Miss Nancy that her and a little girl named Morgan that met me at the front door when I first walked through and just mm -hmm. the way they greeted me was like, why did it take you so long to come? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the way they made me feel. Um, and then it just dominoed from there. Everyone always, no one has ever looked at me like I had, you know, a funk radiating off of me or anything like that not here not here not here so do, have you been judged in, in other christian circles or you know you said before you even judged summit the first time you came to summit it wasn't a great experience right so have you had any experiences like that yeah um well uh, my mom is a is a guy she loves the lord mm -hmm. loves him and i believe she was my first judge because <laughs> uh she, she, she didn't know the extent of my tattoos until I came home and I come out of the shower and didn't have much on and it was just, oh my God, you know, just mm -hmm. one of those, uh, not that she loved me any less, it just really, but the first church I went to, you know, there were, there was no excitement about getting to know Brandon, mm -hmm. you know, that was, that was the way I felt, whether that was true or not, nobody ever said that. Mm -hmm. But I didn't feel welcome. I didn't feel like that was, I could be a part of that environment. Yeah. You yeah. know, and then I come here and people are coming to church in their pajamas. So <laughs> I just, it's good. 
<laughs> so you felt that was good. <laughs> you fit right in, right? Yeah, so I want you to spend some time, and we have some time, okay? And so if you want to ramble, I'll let you ramble, because you said something to me sitting at my house the other night that blew me away. Uh, I did not realize, and I've known Brandon for a few years, and I consider him a brother, but I did not even know that you don't have any post-Jesus tattoos. And so the mentality is, I think for a lot of us are, well, as long as you get tattoos, you know, as long as they're on this side of Jesus and they glorify God and, or, or whatever, I don't know. We tell ourselves a lot of stories. And a lot of people will have the mentality, I need to cover all of this up because I don't believe in this anymore and I'm not in a gang anymore and I'm, I'm not a, a racist. It, but you made a statement to me. Share that with them because I, I just, it blew me away. Yeah. Um, I've got... I've got more than one tattoo that would, uh, that when, when, when somebody sees them, there's no question. I mean, you can't say that stands for anything else, but you know what it is. Um, and I, I told you that I will, I will never cover any of my tattoos. Um, not that I'm proud of them, but I'm not ashamed either. And what that does for me is there's people and I do it regularly there I, I i'm able to talk to people mainly men that you can't talk to that ed can't talk to that they wouldn't give the time of day to because you haven't walked in their shoes mm -hmm. but because of you know they can tell just by looking at me they're at least going to be open to hearing what i have to say that obviously you've been there they don't know what that looks like, but they're not going to slam the door in my face. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. And so maybe they do think I'm still in a gang, but that's just a conversation starter telling me I was there, but I'm not there anymore, and this is why. Mm. And this is all that it got me, and this is what I learned. And then, mm. You know what I mean? And then just let God do God things after that because I can't change people, right? And uh, So that's why I won't ever, I won't ever cover them up because they do tell a story. And it's not a story that, that uh, I, I, what I've learned through Crucible and through, through Summit is that, you know, it's a story that I don't have to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. That shame is gone. So I, I, I just, God uses those things to, to glorify himself. And mm -hmm. because I've seen him do that, I'm, and it blows my mind even when I still see it, I, I just, I, that encourages me to, you know, he's, he took so many broken and violent and destitute, you know, people. Just in scripture, I mean, thousands of years ago, he was doing it, mm -hmm. taking them and changing the world with them. Yeah. And why would people think he still doesn't do that? Mm. You know, so to be, a, I'd, I'd like to be a part of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm going to put you on the spot here. I've been able to meet some of your former brothers um mm. and just so you're doing that i mean you are reaching men that i'll never be able to reach share a little bit about some of your stories and just being in the real world talking to those people that we don't talk to for whatever reason well uh, i will say that ma the majority of them uh, <laughs> are still not where i would like to see them yeah um, but they're not where they were either. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They, I'm constantly encouraged by men that I judge to be unsaved, ungodly, unchristian. But they're encouraging me and they're blessing me by telling me, I love to see the life you're living. I love to see what you're doing. They're encouraged by it. It's, it's my own judgment. It's my own stuff that's, mm -hmm looking at them like why ain't you there yet but i just but i don't i don't never say that to them i just i just keep the door open so that i if they want to talk i've got time for them if they want to you know and uh but my brother um that that you met on mm -hmm. his who just went on his initial weekend has been a uh when I first got saved i used to take that bible and i used to beat him <laughs> up with it and because uh, I thought that's what I was supposed to do, mm -hmm. you know, I, I learned 
it didn't take long before I realized that our relationship's about to be severed if I continue like this. And it was just, and then it, and Crucible helped me see that. Ex, they accepted me for who I was, where I was at right then and there. Knowing I've still got stuff, I've still got work, to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But just who, for who I am. And so I had to look at him the same way and others. Just know he, wherever he's at, God loves him. So I got to love him too. I mean, how is he going to know what God looks like if I'm not at least trying to show him? Yeah. You know, so, yeah, there's, there's men that still, that still, uh, still have a long way to go just like me, but I'm, I'm encouraged because before, uh, before I, I started on this, this, this new life, they would not have, uh, they wouldn't have entertained the conversations that I have with them now. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's because I've been there and done that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember being in prison and, and ministries coming in there and trying to talk. And it was just like, mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I, just, I despised them for wanting to try to talk to me and they don't have a clue about where I've been or what I've been through. Mm -hmm. You know, right or wrong, that's just the way I looked at it. And, and so being able to, at least get in the door with people like that. Show them that, you know, not everybody, mm -hmm. they've, I'm sure they've had bad experiences just like I did, but not everybody's like that. Yeah. I just found it interesting, Summit, because I was blown away, and here I am. I'm supposed to not be judgmental. And I told you last week, you know, and when he, and when he said, oh, I don't have any post-Jesus tattoos, and I'll never cover these up, I was like, what? <laughs> But then I had to check myself, and when he shared with me his heart, because, you know, why would he? Uh, he's, you are, and I, and I really believe this about you, you're God's man to reach those other men that are either incarcerated or in gangs, and they need to know the full Brandon. And it, it, just, it just cracks me up every time uh, we get into church, how we try to change somebody's appearance. And I was almost guilty of that last week when you so I wanted you to share that with them what kind of advice would you give me or anybody else sitting here um, because we're going to run into Brandon's down the road um, for the church in general when we're coming up on somebody that that looks different than us that could be in a gang or could have just been out of jail what, what would you tell the church I think one of the most important things that I would want people to try to understand, meeting new people or people that stand out in, any, in some way, shape, or form, is just that uh, regard, wherever, whatever they look like or whatever they're, however they're carrying themselves, it's coming from a wounded place. Somewhere in their life, you, probably in their childhood, they were wounded. Intentionally or unintentionally, they were wounded, and it started a pattern or a process that they, most people are completely unaware of. I was unaware of what happened to me, and it, it tied into just when are you a man? And who, you know, you ask 100 men, yeah. what, how do you know when you're a man? You'll get 100 different answers, and so it's, it's, Understanding that wherever they're at now, they they're they're coming with uh, they're coming with wounds, baggage, with stories that are no better or worse than the stories of the person that's looking at them right now, because they got one too. And uh, I'm <laughs> I hate to say this, but I love to call people out like that. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. I just do, and mm -hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> Because I'm somebody's clapping, going, Yeah, you go ahead, don't be scared. <laughs> but I'm just as guilty of yeah. it. The same thing I'm calling them out for, I'm just as guilty of. I do it all the time. Mm -hmm. So I just want people to know that they there there's when I see men and this just started happening for me, uh, most of the time when I see men now and they're they've got this character about them or this way they're carrying themselves, the way they're acting, I don't see that. I see this little boy. That's what I see because he's in there somewhere and that's, what's, that's where it all started for them and what does that little boy need? 
What does that little boy need? Not what is this gorilla giant aggressive man trying to get? There's a little boy that wants something that he ain't getting or that he hasn't gotten. What can he get or what can I do for him? Because if you can find that out, everything else on the outside is going to start. It's, it's going to start changing. And it's going to react differently than the way it would if you just, why are you like that? Why are you, you know, why do you look like that? Why do you dress like that? Why do you talk like that? And I get defensive. If people ask me because I can mm -hmm. or because I want to or, you know. Mm -hmm. But if it's, a, it's, if it's a genuine what do you, what, what do you need question, mm -hmm. what can, you know, what can I do or, or what do you want? Just what do you want? You know, you get a different response. Mm. You know, it's not as defensive. It's more, it, it, it'll at least give them something to think about. Yeah. You know, plant the seeds, somebody else waters it, you know, all that. That's a good word. So who did all your tattoos? Uh, I did I did a lot of them. Mm. Uh, men, couple, about three other men that will never see daylight yeah. did the rest of them that I couldn't. So I was setting you up because I know you did some of your own work. And, and so now um, you actually, you are a tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, you tattoo, but you do, it's a different now. Yeah. It's, uh, you're using it to glorify God. And people are telling different stories through their tattoos. And I've, I've talked to you about tattoos. Uh, if you ever talk to Brandon about tattoos, if you ever say, hey, Brandon, what do you think would look good on me? He, this light goes off in his eyes. It's like he lives for this stuff now because he wants to be a part of you telling your story, your journey in Christ through what he's gifted at. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I've, I've, I learned early on. I tattooed professionally for about seven, eight years full time. And then I just got, I got real burnt out on it because of the scene, the industry, mm -hmm. you know, and it was, I just, I just got tired of it. So now I just do it for myself and, you know, and uh, private and just, so I, I'm, I learned early on that the best, if you want a, a, an artist's best work, it's let them, give them free reign to, to use their imaginations. You know, give them the basic idea and then let them do their thing. And don't try to control every line and every, you know, and that's where you're going to get the best work. Yeah. So, yeah, if, you know, you gave me an idea of basically what you wanted and I just immediately saw, I, I saw what it would look like for me. And if you let me do it the way I want to do it, you're going to get the best work <laughs> no, I, I yeah, can do. Yeah, I so. know. Yeah. So tell me the difference now when you're tattooing somebody and it's like for me, because the one you're going to do on me is you're, you're telling my story of my journey with Christ and what God's done versus that industry you talked about and just the joy that it brings you to be able to serve God now through this gift. Yeah, because it's, uh, I'm every, when I'm doing one, I'm in relationship with that person on some level, you know, I just, I don't have, you know, maybe they were a stranger when they started talking to me about the tattoo, but being a tattoo artist, I like, it's also like being a therapist, a little, you know, because people yeah. just want to pour out their story. Yeah. I mean, because it's important they get every detail out because they're trying to tie it to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning things about people that most people may not know. Mm. So and, and so I don't I don't take that for granted that I, I'm I'm tender for that. So I, I want to honor it by giving them what they're looking for hopefully beyond what they were yeah. looking for that's yeah. that's what i look that's what i want to do well so i see a man um and i just want to brag on you for a second before i ask this last question but uh i see a godly man i see a strong man i see a man who loves his family and i see how you treat your wife and kids and the gentleness that's behind the exterior um, and you have a ministry that I would be willing to bet 99.9% .9 of us will never have the opportunity to have. And you're, you're able to rub shoulders with folks that wouldn't give us the time of day. And God's using you in a mighty way. And I've seen your influence on other men in our church and on other men in our community. And especially those men that you work with, that you're bringing 
Um, and so I want to honor you for that. Um, and Thank so you. as we wrap up today, what, what would you like for us to know about Brandon? I guess I would just want people to, to know that the, that the tough, uh, strong, aggressive, whatever exterior that I, I put out that people see is, uh, it's used, I use it now to, to create safety for people that want to heal mm -hmm. and grow. Um, that's, that's what I use it for. I do it with men every week. You know, and and uh, and they those same men do it for me also. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I get as much out of it as hopefully the men do that I work with and 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 do life with. And so it's it's that part of me, that old me, it's still there. I mean, it is. It, it'll always be there. I, but I'm conscious of it and I'm aware and so I take steps and I do things differently than I used to do them. Mm -hmm. And it's provided in a, mm -hmm. a, a stage for me now to to uh, help men, you know, get get through or deal with what they're, you know, what's going on in their lives, mm -hmm. you know, because it's that's what it's been doing for me and still does it for me even as I'm doing that. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, there's men in here that are just, that uh, that I would never have even spoken to, you know, a few years ago, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and I, those same men, I love those men now. Mm -hmm. Like, I love those men now. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just, and I'm thankful that, that they're in my life, you know. Uriah, he's one of them. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, have you ever watched him just up here yeah. on stage? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I envy that. Like it's an audience of one. He's yeah. Worshiping yeah. To an, no, he's worshiping to an audience of one. Our whole worship team's like that. I love I, it. I just, I envy that. Yeah. That's, I just love that. I can't do that. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. Maybe, maybe one of you better. All right, so I lied to you. That's not the last thing. Because <laughs> something occurred to me while you were sharing. I've, I've shared my testimony many, many times, and every time I've shared about myself or been vulnerable, it never fails. Somebody will walk up to me after the service and be like, man, that's me, or I've been there, or you spoke right to me through that story. And so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there may be one or two people in the audience. There may be a handful online, and maybe they're where you were 10, 15 years ago. Just from your heart, what message would you have for somebody that maybe thinks they're too far gone or they had the same thoughts about God that you had back then? What would you share? If you're still breathing, it's not over. Hmm. That's what I would say. Mm. It's not over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you. You're a great man. And uh, appreciate everything God's done in you. Uh, yeah. Amen. Woo. Yeah. So I'm going to invite the band to come back, and uh, we're going to close, and we're going to have a time of response. We're going to end the service today. Uh, every Sunday, we make our elders and their wives and our prayer team available. So we'll have people up front here. We'll have people in Grace Place. If you want to respond, if you feel like God is tugging at your heart, and you want to be prayed over, uh, maybe you're here and, and you're considering, uh, you heard a man say that he went from anti-God to pro-God, and you don't know how that works. Well, uh, there's a God, his name is Jesus, and he died for you and would love 
to be in relationship with you. And maybe you need to come and figure what that is about. We would love to be able to pray for you and, and talk that over with you. And so we're going to have a time of response. We have communion tables, two in the back and two in the front. And we'll have our prayer team and elders available. So you will take communion after I pray if you want to. If you want to come up for prayer, if you just want to come up to the altar on your own, you're able to do that as well. And then when you're done praying and you're done taking communion, you're invited to come back to your seat and Johnny will lead us through worship. And then when Johnny feels like it's over, then he will, he will close us out and dismiss us. Let's pray. Well, Father, there's so much to be thankful for this morning. I think first and foremost, we should start with the new life that you give each and every one of us in Jesus. Thank you for that. Father, as we move into a time of response and a time of worship and a time of communion, may we never forget the sacrifice that was made for us on that cross. May we never forget the gift that you've made available for each and every one of us. And as Brandon just said, you're never too far gone. If you're still breathing, Jesus is calling you home. And so, God, I pray for that heart that sits here this morning that's been hardened by wounds and by life and by circumstance, God, that your Holy Spirit would soften that heart and bring that person or those people to Jesus today. Father, thank you for Brandon. I pray over his ministry. I pray over his ministry and what you're going to do through him, the people that you're going to reach the stories that are going to be told. God, anoint him and bless him. I pray over his wife, Christy, and their kids, Lord. Just continue to strengthen them. God, I pray for us. We've been challenged today. We've been challenged to not just see the person that we see, but to see through that to see someone that could possibly be hurting. So, Father, give us spiritual eyes to see the hurting and the wounded that you put in front of us every day, that we may be a light to them in this community. Thank you for this church. Thank you for all that you do. And most of all, thank you for Jesus. And it's his name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. And if there's any decision you felt like God is leading you to make today, we would encourage you to uh, make that decision and to go online. There's a prayer tab on our website that you can go to. We'd love to pray for you. We would also love for you, if you accepted Christ today, to send us a text. We have a number at the bottom of the screen that you can text us the word accept if you accepted Christ, or if you would like to know more about baptism, just shoot us a text with the word baptize to that number on the screen and we'll get to you, I promise you. Hey, have a great day and listen, if you're looking for a great church and you don't have a church home, come visit us one Sunday. We have two services, one nine, one at 11. We'd love to see you, have a great week.